Hey everyone, welcome back to Netcode Hub Channel. I am Frederick Asino and I'm happy to have you here today. In this video, we are going to look at how to use package created by Netcode Hub to download file or custom test in .NET 8 web application. This package, you can use it in all the render modes, talking about the auto the interactive server interactive web assembly you can use this package in here now let's say when you have a file that you want to download from your web app onto your computer at first uh so you need to just have some write some code in order to perform that task but as i speak i have made that simple for you i have this package installed or this package um Upload it to nuget.org. Now this package, what you do here is install this package and we try to configure it in a simple way. Just two lines and you can download file or you can download custom test onto your computer from your web application. Let's jump right to Visual Studio and I'll show you the trick. So you can see I have Visual Studio 2022 open. I'm going to create a new project. As I said earlier on, now this package you can use it in all the render mode except the static <laughs> because that uh, if we use that mode, the page becomes not interactive. So you can even not even have a button to click, isn't it? Yeah, but you make sure you have the other modes as well. Okay, so I'm going to name this project as so this is demo download so demo blazer web app file download. That is a file, or that is the name of the project. Maybe I'll push the GitHub, check the video playlist, in the playlist, the description, and you're gonna find the link in there. You can also get the source code of this. Okay, so you can see from the interactive render mode, uh, server is okay. We can also use a, uh, um, what we have done, we also go in with uh, the auto, not the auto, auto is very simple. You go in the web assembly, then you know how to also work with the web assembly, then the auto, you try your hands on it, and I believe you're gonna do it. Trust you. Yeah, so let's have this web created, and here I have it. So get it created. So the project is now created. Now, what do we, what do we need to do next? When you go to nuget.org, now that is a packet that I just published recent, just now, <laughs> that is this minutes ago. You see? So maybe you'll be the first person to download, or what do you think? Uh, <laughs> download everything, to, uh, so, 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 because I just did it now, and you can now try your hands on it. So this is the package, netcodeapp.packages.extensions, and that's the current version 1.00, because that's the first <laughs> upload. And you know, what you need to do here is, we, after installing this package, this is the package name, after installing this, as you can see from here, you have to add the script reference, to your app.razor, then that is it. Start using the component. You see, the package is very simple. Just one line, two lines, and you are done. Now here, you are providing values for this. So you provide the value in here, the value, and add the value. That is all that you need to do. And your download button will be ready. Ha! Fantastic. Let's have a look. So I'm going to copy this one. Then let's go to our projects. We go to install this. So go to solution explorer. We right click on dependencies. Let's go to manage nuget packages. So in here, click on the browse tab. Since we're going to search for a new package, so click on type in netcode hub packages extensions, and that is its one. So you can see this extension. Um, just click on it to download and install this to your project so like this as you can see accept it and that is all you're good to go so now that is done what is the next thing to do you can close this so this is the first step we are going for at least three steps then we are done with our download we go to our component we go to our app.razor and our in here we're going to add the reference here so let's make a copy here and now this we're going to say that underscore content because you are referring an a razor class so underscore oh it's not working other things you see 
Okay, so content slash net code hub dot oh hub must come first dot packages dot extensions slash download dot js so there's a js file that you need to actually add to the the application here okay that's what we need to do so once you are done adding this you just go back to solution you go back to your component pages and now your home page so in your home page what can you do to use this it's quite simple let's remove this one and you're going to add you first need to include the namespace so as using and that is a net code hub dot packages so dot packages dot extensions and aside from that you can have access to this download component you see that's what i need to do <laughs> now what's here in here there are some parameters that i need to provide file name now aside from that you need to provide file url and three properties so three parameters now you need not to provide file url and our test you must provide one why am i saying that now test here it is if you want to write a custom test and now create it into a file or convert into a file and now download you pass in your test here now when you have an actual file and maybe a WW root folder that I want to download it, you pass in the file name here. And that is all. I think that's easy, isn't it? Ah, <laughs> let's see. So we're going to provide this. Now let's say this is code. And here, let's have string. We said this is file name. And now with this file name, maybe let's have like this. We have string file url we have string test okay so this that we have maybe let's make this as nullable okay so now we have this right so that's it that we are going to bind it so we copy this file name we're going to bind it here now i'm going to copy the file url we're going to also bind it here let's see Bind it here. You can also copy the test and now do the same to the test. Very simple one. Now, once you have this, let's run this application and see what we have now. Oh, that's right. So, you can see we have our download button here. Have you seen it? Good. So, if I click on this, let's see what happened. If I click on this, let's see. Nothing is happening. Do you know the reason why? Can you tell me the reason why that isn't happening? See? Yes, I know, and I believe you know because this is a static mode and it is not interactive. This works as a button at the same time, a component with parameters. So, before this button could work, we need to make it what? Interactive. So, since the interface, not interface, since it is interactive um, server, we're going to make it as render mode. Then we say interactive what? Yeah, choose a server. Now let's do it again. Oh, that's right. So it is live now. Now if I click on this, let's see, it tells you please supply value to the download parameters. Yes. You can see that when we check this, we have declared variables, but there are no values assigned to. And this component must check. If they are null, then it should tell you that. Maybe the next update, I'm going to use something like a nice model to display the response to you instead of using the JS alert. Okay, that could be an update one. <laughs> Don't worry, but for now, that is working. Okay, so we are going to supply values to this. All right, now let's create a test here. Let's apply values to both of these. So let's say the default value for this. We are saying here the file name is file name. That is the name that given to this file. The URL we are given to file URL. I want to show you something, okay? Now the test here 
it is new test and maybe in here I want us to put this in the next line so you can use string builder to build us to build your string or you can use this and we can use environment environment dot new line then we can say we are testing yes and sure we are testing <laughs> the package okay so we're gonna have a new line so new test new line the next line gonna have this all right so now we have this take note that all these parameters here should not have values example you should toggle between file url and now test because test here is going to take the test that you're going to create and i convert it into an, a test document this file you are also going to take it go to your file directory and now grab the file into pdf and also return so you cannot provide two files at the same time so it must be one now if you forget and now do this let's see the response that you're going to have i'm going to run this again and now let's wait a while and now see the output of this i'm going to click on it are you ready click us and let's see so i click on this and it tells you that test or file url cannot be used at the same time please supply value to only one yes i think it makes sense isn't it so you can never download it although you have supplied values to these parameters but you can never download so that can come you cannot do that you see so let's supply value to this we go back again and we don't we can just remove this because you're not having any file here known as this so let's move this maintain all this test now you have file name and other test the name that we are going to give here it is custom file name or let's say this is net code custom file name okay so we have this now let's rerun it again and see so it is ready now now let's click on it and see so i click here and now let's see wow we have the file and i have seen we have the file name now if i quickly run it through my folder you can see that there is a file right maybe you're asking yourself let's open it and see whether you have what we type in yes we're going to do that don't worry i'm going to open it and now check it out do you see oh now that is it new line so you see now having a new line have you seen so it took the test that we created and i converted this into a test document and downloaded this okay that's fine now the next thing i'm going to do here is i'm going to grab a file so i'm going to grab maybe this file course outline grab this file and let's go to the code inside this www folder let's assume you have uploaded some file in here client file etc etc right so i'll paste this here that's fine now this i want to download take is a pdf so i want to download this so what i need to do here is to provide the url of this file since you're working in the blizzard server you can just grab something like this we go to the home and in here see what you're doing we going to just paste this to the file name url paste it here okay that's the file url and now it is dot pdf so the name of this we're going to copy this because that's the name of the file so we're going to replace it to the file name like this and that is all so with this test we don't even need it now let's see if this is going to work for us so we're going to provide file url and i will say this is file url let's remove this one okay so now we have this let's go all right so the app is loaded now let's click on download and check it out before that let me make sure i have the folder opening okay so that is the folder that you can see from here it is from the download and our document because that is all pdf files are going to sit and wait for you so i'm going to click on this download and as you can see download blocked and blocked by okay so continue on 
since it is coming from the local that's why it has blocked it you know this is from the local host http so it is not secured so always allow click on done and now from here let's check it out so you can see we have the pop-up there's a pop-up from here and if I click on, you can see the size of the file, 564, oh, 546. Click on start downloading. And you can see the file has completed downloading. And I'll check it out. You can see we have the file in here, isn't it? Now it is the same file, so 547 kilobyte. So the file, this is working. It supports text, custom text, upload, no, no, download, and also PDF download as well. Okay. Quickly, let's go through the WebAssembly and let, let's also see how to work with that. All right, so fast forward, I have created the same webapp.net 8 project and I chose Interactive WebAssembly. I installed the package as we've done already. Now, when you create the package, when you create that project, you're going to have two. There's the client and that is the server in here, okay? So, what you have, there's a client. The file is supposed to be on the server. So this side, you see we have this course outline.pdf. And we have the home. So I just move the component from this component folder to the client. And that is what you can see from here. So I insert a package and we have the same package in here from packages. Next code how package.extension. I hope you can see that. Good. Now when you go to the app.razor, I just copied and pasted this next code have the packages the extensions like the JS and that's the father you and I we know when you come to the home page you are using the component so file name file name you file URL file URL so we have it in here and that's what we have specified so there is a course outline that is a file name and we have it set right let's save this and let's run this and check it out so let's click on it and check it out. So this too, you can see now it has been downloaded and that is a file name.pdf. So if I open the folder, it is the same. So you can see that we have the file name here, right? And that is a file that we downloaded now from the client or the interactive web assembly. Yeah, so this package is working both in the server session and also for the interactive web assembly too. It does work. I believe you love it. Yes, yeah, so go ahead and now um, use this package. Thank you so much for watching this video. I'm going to end here. Maybe the next time it's going to be fire as well. So till then, take care and I'll catch you later.